morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to our town hall on the Infinite Loop campus. Normally, we don't spend a lot of time looking back, but yes. We are about to celebrate Apple's 40th birthday on April 1st. That video lists some of the amazing products and epic moments in our history and reminds us just how many times Apple has changed the world. Recently, we passed a major milestone that no one could have ever imagined. There are now more than one billion Apple devices in use around the world. This is, an, this is an incredible milestone for us and an indicator of how much impact Apple has on people around the world. Our products are such an important part of people's daily lives and responsibility. So before we get started today, I'd like to address something that I know is on the minds of many people this morning. We built the iPhone for you, our customers, and we know that it is a deeply personal device. For many of us, the iPhone is an extension of ourselves. About a month ago, we asked Americans across the country to join in a conversation. We need to decide as a nation how much power the government should have over our data and over our privacy. I've been humbled and deeply grateful for the outpouring of support that we've received from Americans across the country from all walks of life. We did not expect to be in this position at odds with our own government, but we believe strongly that we have a responsibility to help you protect your data and protect your privacy. We owe it to our customers and we owe it to our country. This is an issue that impacts all of us and we will not shrink from this responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So let's get back to why you're here this morning. Because so many people use our products every day, we understand that we have an opportunity and a responsibility to impact things for the better. So we want to get started this morning by talking about two initiatives where we are working hard to leave the world better than we found it. We'd like to start with the environment. And I'd like to invite Lisa Jackson up to tell you what we're doing to preserve and protect the environment. Lisa? Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, you know, just like everything we do at Apple, when we think about the environment, we think about innovation. You see, we want to change the world for the better. And we think there's no greater challenge in the world than our changing climate. Now, the solution is energy efficiency and renewable energy. And the time for action is right now. So two years ago, we told you about our ambitious goal, one that we hope others will adopt. We told you that our goal was to be 100% renewable in 100% of our operations worldwide. That's all of our offices, all of our retail stores, and every single one of our data centers. So two years later, how are we doing? Well, currently, 93% of our facilities worldwide run on renewable energy. <laughs> yeah. 
And just last year, we reached our goal of using 100% renewable power to power our operations in the United States, as well as our offices and stores in China. In fact, we're now 100% renewable in 23 countries around the world. Now, in some places, we're able to purchase renewable energy right from the grid, from existing sources. But that's not always possible, which has led us to some pretty innovative solutions. In Sichuan Province, China, we found a way to build a 40 megawatt solar farm without disturbing the local population. Yaks. <laughs> The innovation is in building a system that allows for electricity generation and hay production for the local yak ranchers. That solar project is producing more than enough electricity to power our 34 retail stores and our 19 offices in the country that makes our facilities there carbon neutral. In Singapore, where there's not enough room to put solar panels on the ground, we looked up. Solar arrays on more than 800 rooftops will cover the electricity use of our offices and our future stores. We're really proud to be 100% renewable in Singapore. We're also really proud of the fact that 100% of our data centers are powered by clean sources of energy like the sun, wind, and water. Now think for a second about what that means. It means every time you send an iMessage, or make a FaceTime video call, or ask Siri a question, you can feel really good about reducing your impact on the environment. Now let's talk about another way that we're reducing our impact on the environment, and that's by protecting forests that produce the paper we use, especially for our packaging. You see, we believe that paper, like energy, can be a renewable resource. So we're proud to announce that today, 99% of our packaging comes from paper that is recycled or is coming from sustainably managed forests. <laughs> this is especially important as we continue our move to all paper packaging. But we're not stopping there. Through our partnership with the Conservation Fund, we've permanently preserved over 36,000 acres of working forests in Maine and North Carolina. And we're partnering with World Wildlife Fund to improve the management of up to 1 million acres in China. You see, our goal is to add to the world's supply of responsibly sourced paper rather than take from it. Now, while we're focused on conservation, let me tell you about another way we're working to preserve our planet's resources and that's through reuse and recycling. You see, we've worked really hard to make sure our products don't end up in places like this. And we think the best way to do that is to have them be reused. That's why we design our products to last. And we're happy to say that thanks to their durability, the vast majority of iPhones that we get back end up being reused, including the phones we get back from our iPhone upgrade and trade up programs. But at some point, even our products need to be recycled. Many recycling systems today waste much of the material they collect, so it can't be reused. We think it's time for a new approach. We put an incredible amount of energy into designing the best products in the world. And we've put that same kind of energy into thinking about what happens when they can no longer be used. Let me introduce you to a pretty cool R&D project. We call him Liam. <laughs> Liam's pretty cool, right? There's no other machine in the world that can do what Liam can do, and it was conceived and designed by Apple engineers right here in California. The things we've learned from this project will help us make even bigger strides in the area of reuse and recycling as we go forward. As you saw in the video, Liam separates the iPhone into its components. This allows us to recover the materials, high quality materials, and reintroduce them into the global supply. And that saves natural resources. So that tungsten from the iPhone alert module can be used to make a precision cutting tool. And the silver from the motherboard can be used to, in a solar panel. 
Now, ultimately, our goal is to create breakthroughs that allow us to use those high-quality materials in our own products because reuse and recycling is so important. And that's where you can come in. With Apple Renew, you can recycle your devices easily and quickly in a way that's safe for your data and safe for the planet. All you have to do is take them into an Apple retail store or send them to us for free by visiting apple.com slash recycling to print a prepaid mailing label. We're making great progress in our environmental efforts, but we have a lot more to do, and we promise to keep you updated along the way. Now back to Tim. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Powering Apple on 100% renewable energy is an incredibly ambitious and bold objective, but we are determined to meet it, and we hope others will join us. The second initiative we'd like to talk about this morning is health. With the launch of Research Kit last year, we've seen that Apple technology can have a positive impact on people's health. And to tell us about some progress in this area, I'd like to invite up Jeff Williams. Jeff? <laughs> Last year, we introduced Research Kit, and our goal was to use technology to solve some of the biggest problems facing medical research. We wanted to make it easier for people to participate in research studies, and we wanted to make it easier to gather accurate and frequent data from the devices we're all already carrying in our hands. So what happened? Virtually overnight, the research studies that we launched became some of the largest in history, with tens of thousands of people signing up. Like in this Parkinson study, which became the largest Parkinson study in history in less than 24 hours. <laughs> studies broke geographical boundaries. Traditionally, studies are centered around the research institution, but with Research Kit, anyone, anywhere can participate. Mount Sinai's asthma app actually discovered asthma triggers from all 50 states. But more important than any of that, researchers are gaining insights that just weren't possible before. Take diabetes. You and I know diabetes is type 1 and type 2. But Mass General's study of type 2 diabetes found that some people respond completely differently to therapies than others, supporting the theory that there are actually subtypes of type 2 diabetes, helping pave the way for precision medicine for the future. Some of the world's most respected institutions have released research kit studies covering a, a wide range of diseases and conditions that affect billions of people around the world. Research kit is opening up all kinds of possibilities, and I'd like to show you a video to tell you more about it. You know, when we introduced Research Kit, our goal was simply to improve medical research, and we, we thought our work was largely done. Um, but what you probably saw in the film and what became clear to us later is the very same tools used to advance medical research can also be used to help people with their care. Let me give you an example. In the Parkinson study, uh, patients do tests several times a day on their iPhone, like the simple tap test you saw in the video, to assess their symptom levels. And researchers can see the symptom level across a range of days. And they can see this before and after medication. And there were lots of patients, like patients A, where you can see that symptom levels improve post-medication. In other words, the medicine's working. But there were also a lot of patients, like patient B, where post-medication there's no improvement at all. Their symptom levels didn't change. In other words, the medicine's not working. The patient either needs a different dose or a different medication or maybe no medication at all. But today, neither the individual nor the caregiver has this information. And we think empowering people with data about their health is incredibly <laughs> important. So today, we're launching Care Kit.
CareKit is a framework to build apps that empower people to take a more active role in their care. And the very first CareKit app being released today is for Parkinson's. And it surfaces some of that valuable information we discussed so people can start understanding better what affects their health. And these six leading institutions will begin using this app with their Parkinson's patients immediately so they can have a more informed discussion about individualized treatments. Let me give you another example, surgery. One of the things physicians tell us is that one of the most important things affecting outcome of surgery is actually what you do during the recovery process. Yet, we go from being monitored by a team of highly trained specialists using leading edge technology to being discharged with this, a single sheet of paper. Uh, this is actually what happens pretty much across the, across the country. This is your list of things to do, things not to do, which days you're supposed to do them on. And adherence to this is notoriously very poor. So using the care kit modules, we've been working with Texas Medical Center, and they've created an app for the phone that guides you through this critical process in a completely different way. It's got a care card, which is your list of things to do every day in checklist form. And as you fill them out, the little heart fills up. It's really nice. It's got a symptom and measurement tracker where you can record information on your progress. It's, you can record things like your temperature to monitor for an infection. Or you can use the accelerometer on the iPhone to study range of motion. And then you can share this information with your loved ones who can help support you through this recovery process. And best of all, you can share this information with your physician who will take the results of how you're doing and they will dynamically update your care plan so it changes on the fly, something just not possible with a sheet of paper. Those are just two examples of care kit apps. There are others coming and we think the possibilities here are limitless. Now, a word about privacy. Nothing is more sensitive than your health data. You decide which apps you use and with whom you share this information. CareKit, like ResearchKit, will be open source and it will be available in April. We have been absolutely humbled and inspired by the response to ResearchKit and we can't wait to see what great apps get created with CareKit. Thank you. Back to Tim. Thank you. It's amazing that in such a short period of time that Research Kit has had a profound impact on the broad area of medical research. And our hope is that Care Kit can have the same kind of impact on helping individuals manage their care. So you've seen the latest important work we have going on the environment and in the health area. Now I'd like to talk about products. And I'll get started with the Apple Watch. Since we launched it less than a year ago, the Apple Watch has become the top selling smartwatch in the world. But most importantly to us, customers love it. They found that it's not just useful, but it's become an essential part of their daily lives. They love being able to receive and respond to messages directly from their wrist, as well as track their activity, manage their calendar, navigate with maps, and get up-to-the-minute information on sports scores and news headlines and more. People also love changing the bands and how it gives the watch an entirely new look, one that's appropriate for any purpose or occasion or season. About a third of our Apple Watch wearers regularly change their bands. Today, we're introducing some brand new colors and a, and a new band that's made from a whole different material. Our new woven nylon band. Thank you. Our new woven nylon band features a unique four layer construction. It comes in a variety of vibrant colors. We think it's gonna be incredibly popular. Also, there's new sport and leather bands in all new colors 
And there's a stunning space black Melanie's Lou that is absolutely beautiful. We're really excited about this new spring lineup, and we want even more people to be able to enjoy Apple Watch and what it can do for them. So beginning today, Apple Watch will start at just $2.99. That's our update on Apple Watch. Now I'd like to talk about Apple TV bringing all new capabilities to the biggest screen in your house. People are absolutely loving the new Apple TV with the App Store and the innovative Siri remote. After the introduction of the new Apple TV last quarter, we had the largest sales ever for Apple TV. Now, apps are the future of television, and this transition is well underway. In just a short period of time, since the Apple TV has been shipping, we have 5,000 apps on the App Store. There's amazing content apps to enjoy all over the world, like this one from HBO, HBO Now, where you can watch the latest HBO shows whenever you want, wherever you want, shows like Game of Thrones and Veep, and of course, Silicon Valley. And NCAA March Madness Live, just in time, where you can watch two live tournament games simultaneously. This is exclusive to Apple TV. And you can also monitor the scores of the other games and quickly change between the action. And of course, there's a whole bunch of games to pick from, like this one from AG Drive. Now, in addition to great video content and great games, there's a wide variety of other apps on the App Store, like SolarWalk 2, which turns your living room into a planetarium. And BrainPop, which is a great educational app for kids. And Grubhub, of course, you can order your favorite food and get it delivered right to your home. This is very key for me. <laughs> and Cody, you can choose from the internet's best workouts. There's some great ones. This is just a small sample of what's available on Apple TV, and much more is coming. Now, of course, tvOS powers the Apple TV. And at the heart of the Apple TV experience is Siri. With Siri, you can just ask for something great to watch, like show me movies with Kevin Hart. And there it is. Pick your favorite. In looking for a movie or a TV show, Siri searches the popular apps so you don't have to. We've added some great content app for, for Siri to search. We've got more coming, and we'll keep adding more over time. Now, we've got some other great features coming to Apple TV, like folders. Now you can organize your apps in your home screen just like you want to. <laughs> and dictation. So you can now use your voice to enter text on the screen. This includes usernames and passwords. You're really going to love it. <laughs> Plus Siri for the App Store, so you can ask for any app that you want or any type of app that you want. And now you can access your entire iCloud photo library, including live photos, right on your big screen. All of this is available as a free update beginning today. That's Woo! Apple TV. <laughs> now I'd like to talk about iPhone iPhone is the most loved smartphone in the world. And today, we're welcoming a new member to the iPhone family. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite up Greg Joswick. Greg? Thanks, Jim. Our customers are loving the new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. And while the vast majority of our customers prefer these larger display iPhones, we're here today to talk about a smaller iPhone. Our four-inch iPhones are actually an important part of our lineup. This last year, we sold over 30 million four-inch iPhones. That's a lot of phones. Put it in perspective, it took us about two and a half years to sell that many iPhones when we first started from our entire lineup. So why are people buying four-inch iPhones? Well, there's two reasons. First, for some people, they simply love smaller phones. 
They want the most compact iPhone design. Second, we found that for a lot of these customers, it's their first iPhone. Whether they're switching from Android or it's their first smartphone, it's the first time they're experiencing iOS and our hardware and software integration and our amazing ecosystem. And in some countries like China, it's the majority of these customers who it's their very first iPhone. So some people asked us, some people even pleaded with us to please keep the four inch products in our lineup. Well, today we're gonna do just that and we're gonna make it a whole lot better. And as you may have heard, we're calling it the iPhone SE. <laughs> So let me show it to you. So we start with this beloved aluminum design, but we've made some beautiful refinements, including this gorgeous rose gold finish. We've added matte chamfered edges and an inset stainless steel Apple logo, just like the iPhone 6S. But it's on the inside where the iPhone SE really shines. It's got advanced technologies that make this the most powerful four inch phone ever. It's incredibly powerful, which makes it even better to do the things that iPhone customers want to do, including playing the most graphic intensive games. So at the heart of the iPhone SE, of course, is our chips, our amazing Apple A9 chip with its embedded M9 motion coprocessor. This means that the iPhone SE has the same processing performance as the iPhone 6S, which is literally double the speed of the iPhone 5S. And the iPhone SE also has the same incredible graphics performance as the iPhone 6S, which is three times faster than the iPhone 5S. And the embedded M9 motion coprocessor is always on, so it enables all kinds of features like tracking your fitness all day. But it also allows you to use Hey Siri. So hands-free, you can say things like this. To... Hey Siri, how do you feel about recycling? I love the Apple Renew program, but Liam really tears me apart. That, that's for Lisa. So even though it has all these new capabilities and it's so much more powerful than the iPhone 5S, the iPhone SE delivers incredible battery improvements across the board. And of course, people love taking photos with their iPhones more than any other phone or camera. So we wanted to give it our most advanced camera system. So we've given it our incredible 12 megapixel uh, eyesight camera with focus pixels and true tone flash. And we have, of course, that image signal processor from the A9 that enables all kinds of great features like the panorama pictures up to 63 megapixel, but also improvements to video, slow-mo, time-lapse, and of course your photos, which means you can take incredible pictures like this and this. I don't know what you're thinking, but that is not Phil Schiller skateboarding to work. <laughs> Looks just like them though. And the, <laughs> and the iPhone SE can capture live photos. So you can take your, photo, your still photos and have them come to life. <laughs> and our front facing FaceTime HD camera, we've given the retina flash. And what that means is you want to take a selfie in low light, we're able to drive the display three times brighter than normal in order to flash the true tone uh, flash for you so you get a picture like this instead of the dark selfie. It can even capture 4K video. And just like the iPhone 6S, you can edit up to two simultaneous streams of 4K video with iMovie right on the iPhone SE. We've also given it great wireless capabilities. We now have LTE speeds that are 50% faster than the iPhone 5S. And we've added more LTE bands so you have better global roaming. And of course, high fidelity call quality with voice over LTE. And we've given it high speed Wi-Fi as well with 802.11ac, which is three times faster than the iPhone 5S. And high quality Wi-Fi calling is also supported. Now it has touch ID to keep the contents of your iPhone secure, but also quickly available to you at just a touch of your finger. And now you can make easy, secure, and private payments with Apple Pay built in.
So to do that, we've added an NFC radio and a secure element inside of the iPhone SE. And we've launched Apple Pay in these countries, and we most recently rolled it out in China, where the response was absolutely fantastic. We had over 3 million cards added in the first 72 hours alone. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, the iPhone SE meets our really high environmental standards. It is, of course, highly recyclable aluminum and glass, but it's got other recyclable components and materials as well, which both Lisa and Liam loves. And it's free from that naughty list of environmentally unfriendly materials as well. So as you can see, we've added an incredible array of advanced technologies to the iPhone SE in this really compact design, which makes it the most powerful 4-inch phone ever. It really is an amazing device. So the iPhone SE, what does it cost? Well, we're going to start the price of the iPhone SE at only $399. which makes it our most affordable price we've ever introduced a new iPhone at. And we have a higher capacity 64 gigabyte model for just $499. And if you're on a two-year two subsidized service contract, you get the iPhone SE for free. But of course, we know installment plans have become incredibly popular, and the iPhone SE now starts at just $17 per month without a service contract. So the iPhone SE joins our incredible lineup of iPhones with the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6S and 6S Plus. It's the strongest iPhone lineup we've ever had. We can begin, we'll begin taking orders for the iPhone SE this Thursday, March 24th, and it'll be available next week, March the 31st. We'll be shipping first in, this, in these countries, but many more will quickly follow. We'll be in more than 100 countries by the end of May. So that's the iPhone SE. So whether this is your first iPhone or you just love smaller phones, we think you're going to love it. But I got more. Fundamentally important, of course, to the iPhone experience is iOS. And iOS is the most advanced mobile operating system in the world. And of course, our latest version, iOS 9, was released this past fall with incredible features as well as improvements to the foundation of iOS. And iOS 9 today is running on 80% of our active iOS devices. That compares incredibly favorably with the latest version of Android, also released this past fall, which is running on 2% <laughs> of their active devices. And for the last couple of months, we've been testing and publicly and previewing iOS 9.3, which is one of the biggest dot releases we've ever done. And it adds some new innovations, as well as improvements to a wide range of apps. So I'd like to share some of the highlights with you. Let's start with night shift. So studies have shown that exposure to blue light in the evening can actually make it harder for you to fall asleep at night. So night shift automatically shifts the colors of the display to the warmer end of the spectrum, which may help you sleep better at night. So how does that work? Well, when it's enabled, night shift uses your iOS device's clock, as well as its geolocation, to know when it's sunset in your location. And then it automatically shifts the color of that display to the warmer end of the spectrum, which reduces the blue light, which may help you sleep better. It's a really cool feature. That's why I'm so wide awake and alert. <laughs> <laughs> notes, let's talk about Notes. Notes is actually one of the most used apps on the platform. It's used by literally hundreds of millions of people every day. And customers are loving the newly redesigned Notes app in iOS 9. Well, today we're adding the ability to further protect your most personal notes with a passcode or fingerprint. <laughs> health. The health app gives users a quick and easy dashboard to their health and fitness data. And there are already over 2,500 apps that provide data into the health app. And we want to make it easier for customers to find the right apps for their health and fitness needs. So we've added great app suggestions right into the Health app so you can easily add data to your dashboard. News. We introduced Apple News with iOS 9, and it's become the source of news for over 50 million active users. And in iOS 9, we want to make it even faster and more personalized. So we're adding top stories to make it easier to track your news on your iPhone or iPad. 
and for you now suggest trending topics as well as editors' picks. CarPlay. CarPlay is the safer, smarter way to use your iPhone in your car. And every major car brand has committed to integrate CarPlay into their cars. And already more than 100 car models have been announced with CarPlay support, and more and more keep coming. So you can expect to see this in more and more places. And with iOS 9.3, we've added even more useful features to CarPlay. For instance, your Apple Music experience gets better with new and for you, which provides songs, artists, albums, handpicked by experts, as well as selections based on your own preferences. And Maps gets even better with the nearby feature, which allows you to find gas, parking, restaurants, and more, which is a tap of your finger. Education. iPad, with its powerful features and apps, opens up new and more engaging ways of learning. And with iOS 9.3, using iPads in the classroom is even easier and more powerful. With a preview of a new suite of software and capabilities that are designed specifically for students, teachers, and administrators. <laughs> so that's just some of the highlights of iOS 9.3. We think it's turned out really great, and it's going to make the best mobile experience even better. And it's available as a free update for all of you today. That's iOS 9.3 and iPhone SE. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great update to iOS. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to sleeping better. And I'm incredibly excited about iPhone SE. Many, many customers have asked for this, and I think they're really going to love it. Next up is iPad. We believe that iPad is the perfect expression of the future of personal computing. We took a giant step in this direction last fall with the introduction of the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. And since then, many people are telling us that the iPad Pro has become their primary computing device. We've got some exciting news for you today. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite up Phil Schiller. Phil? Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I couldn't be more excited to be the one to be able to tell you all about iPad. Customers really have fallen in love with the new iPad Pro in the six months that it's been on the market. They're in love with the huge 12.9-inch retina display, all its performance, all the capabilities, the speaker system, and the Apple Pencil. That is a true revolutionary breakthrough. We're hearing so much from customers around the world. Customers like John Lasseter, Chief Creative Officer, of Pixar and Disney Animation Studios. John had this to say, the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil are the closest we've ever been able to get in the digital world to actually drawing on paper. Or Stephen Gates, head of design at Citi. At Citi, iPad Pro is truly transforming how we work. Our design team has incorporated iPad Pro into their daily workflow, allowing them to create, collaborate, and share ideas in new ways and Alex Waldman, head of design at Rafa. iPad Pro goes with me everywhere. For everything I do, latest cycling collection, it has not only replaced my laptop, but my paper notebook as well. People love iPad Pro. It is a revolutionary device. And so that's why today we're so excited to introduce you to, for the first time, the second member of the iPad Pro family. An entirely new iPad Pro based around a 9.7 inch retina display. And it weighs less than one pound. It is an iPad Pro through and through. But why make a second iPad Pro that's smaller? Well, there are two really great reasons. First, we started iPad with a 9.7 inch display for a very good reason. It's a large enough display to get all of your work done, but small and light enough to carry with you everywhere you go. People have loved the size and from the beginning, it has remained our most popular iPad size. In fact, I'm really happy to tell you that to date, we've sold over 200 million iPads with a 9.7 inch display. So for all of these customers, when they learn about the features of iPad Pro, they'll all see that it is their ultimate upgrade. There's a second group of people that 
would love to reach with this new iPad Pro. Windows users. <laughs> you may not know this, but the majority of people who come to an iPad Pro are coming from a Windows PC, a desktop, or a notebook. Now, of course, we all know Windows PCs were originally conceived of before there was an internet, before there was social media, before there were app stores. And this is a, an amazing statistic. There are over 600 million PCs in use today that are over five years old. This is really sad. <laughs> it really is. These people, yes, could really, really benefit from an iPad Pro. And when they see the features and performance and capabilities of a product like the iPad Pro designed for our modern digital lifestyle, well, many of them will find it is their ultimate PC replacement. Best of all, they can get access to all those incredible apps in the App Store. And we're so happy to tell you there are now over 1 million apps. First, it has a Pro display. It starts with the same materials used in the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, an Oxide TFT display driven by a custom Apple timing controller. That custom controller has a variable refresh rate, so it runs really fast but power efficient. We use our photo alignment technology to align the individual crystals so that it has an incredible contrast ratio and sharp text. But there's so much more to this display. It is 40% less reflective than an iPad Air 2. At just 1.8% reflectivity, it is the lowest reflectivity of any tablet. And if you're a pro working, you really appreciate that low reflectivity. And it's brighter, too, 25% brighter than an iPad Air 2. It puts out 500 nits of light, which makes it the brightest tablet available. And it has a very wide color gamut. It uses the digital cinema spec DCI-P3, which gives it a 25% greater color saturation than iPad Air 2. In so many ways, this is the best display we've ever built for an iPad. In addition, it supports two really breakthrough features. The first you've heard about from JAWS. It works with night shift. So that as the sun goes down, the brightness dims a bit, the blue light wavelengths get reduced, and some people find that makes it easier to get to sleep. But the second feature is a breakthrough that's never appeared on any device before. It's incredibly innovative. We call it a true tone display. A true tone display measures the color temperature of ambient light and adjusts the display to match. I heard an O out there. Somebody already gets this. This is great. <laughs> It has two new four-channel ambient light sensors that measure both brightness and color temperature. So how does that work? Well, let's start with a piece of paper. A piece of paper reflects light. So when you use it in different environments, it reflects the color temperature of the light in that environment. Our optic nerves are designed to be comfortable with this experience. You go into the warm, incandescent light of your home, and the paper takes on a warm tone. But now you use a digital device. Digital devices emit light, and that light has the same color temperature no matter where it is. So the color cast isn't right. It doesn't match paper white. Well, except now if it is a true tone display, it does. No matter where you use it, it automatically senses the color temperature of the light and becomes warmer or cooler and matches paper white and is really natural. Once you use a display with this true tone technology, you never want to go back to old technology again. It is quite a breakthrough. Use. Next, it has a pro audio system. It has four speakers working in the stereo system that adjust automatically the frequencies between highs and lows depending on how you hold it. It also puts out the, twice the audio volume of an iPad Air 2. But best of all, this has incredible level of performance unlike any other mobile device. It has our fastest chip ever, an A9X. This is our third generation 64-bit chip, over 3 billion transistors. It's made with a 3D FinFET architecture. If you don't know what that is, it is unbelievably state-of-the-art. And people are noticing. Tech Raider wrote, iPad Pro packs powerful enough hardware to be a genuine laptop replacement with more than enough grunt in terms of processor and graphics performance. And it has a ton of grunt. 
12 cores of graphics delivering over half a teraflop of graphics power. That's more than an Xbox 360 in a device that you hold in the palm of your hands. It's incredible for gaming. It's also incredible for professional applications. Modeling, rendering, just fly on the new iPad Pro. And it's absolutely enough performance for the great iOS 9 features for multitasking, when you can have apps side by side and video streaming and picture in picture. It is an incredibly powerful chip. It also, as Jaws told you, includes our embedded M9 motion coprocessor. With that, apps that use our built-in sensors are instantly calibrated and un up and running quickly. It also supports, hey, Siri. I said it that way because I know it always sets off people's phones when I do it. <laughs> This means you can talk to your iPad, and you can ask it to open your mail and check for new messages. You can talk to your iPad and ask it to go to a website or look up a contact, and it can do it all automatically for you. And the iPad Pro supports a great line of Pro accessories. There's a smart keyboard designed specifically for the size of that 9.7-inch Retina display. <laughs> for example, my favorite feature, Command Tab, so I can switch between my multitasking applications just like on my desktop Mac. And it supports the greatest accessory Apple has ever made, the pencil. This is an amazing device. It's a breakthrough, and people are really falling in love with it. Christopher Finn of Creative Block wrote, let me be completely clear, this is the best digital drawing tool there has ever been. We couldn't agree more. It is an amazingly precise drawing tool. It senses pressure, as well as the tilt angle for amazing drawing. And you can draw just like you do on paper, by putting your hands on the iPad, because there's built-in palm rejection software. And it recognizes the pencil as well as your fingertips, so that you can use both simultaneously to advanced techniques for your drawings, your illustrations. People love drawing illustrations on it. They also like taking notes on it. It's an incredible device. There are other pro accessories as well. A great new line of lightning adapters. For example, a new lightning SD card reader that's incredibly fast. And this is a really powerful uh, accessory, a USB card reader. Sure, it lets you plug in your camera, which many of us do, but because it's powered, you can use a lot of your corporate network. And for those of you who are podcasters, you like you can plug in a microphone and do your podcast right from an iPad Pro. <laughs> Customers love taking photos with their iPads as well. Certainly photos for personal use but more importantly, they can use the camera for work as well. You can use the camera in augmented reality apps. You can use it to scan documents. You can use it to see constellations in the night sky. There are so many great uses for that camera. And in the new iPad Pro, we've put our most advanced camera yet. It's a 12 megapixel eyesight camera with its focus pixels, true tone flash, that amazing image signal processor built into the A9X allows you to take pictures quickly with amazing color and low noise huge panoramas and beautiful live photos. And you can shoot 4K video with it. So right on your iPad Pro, you shoot 4K video, and you can edit multiple streams right there on the device. There's a five megapixel FaceTime HD camera, which is wonderful for doing video conference calls. And again, the whole display is a retina flash, so you can take great selfies with you and your friends as well. There are so many new features and innovations packed into this iPad Pro. Hopefully you see what we do. This is the best upgrade ever for every iPad owner, and it is the ultimate PC replacement for all of those old PCs in the world. Like everything we do, the team works hard to make it environmentally friendly. Mercury-free LED backlit display, arsenic-free display glass, BFR-free, beryllium-free, PVC-free, and aluminum. The iPad Pro comes in four metal finishes, silver, gold, glass, and recycled. Highly space gray, and for the first time, rose gold as well. And there are great cases and covers that you can add that come in a variety of beautiful colors. So this is the iPad Pro. With a 9.7 inch retina display, what will it cost? Well, we're really excited to offer a 32 gigabyte iPad Pro for just $599. That's $200 less expensive than the 12.9 inch, and hopefully we can reach a lot more customers with it. For 128 gigs, for 749,
And for the first time ever in an iOS device, there's a configuration now with 256 gigabyte of storage. <laughs> Orders begin this Thursday, March 24th, and they also start shipping next week on the 31st. We are so excited about this iPad Pro. The team's worked so hard on it. We really love it. And we've created a brief video to tell you just a little bit more about it. So these are our iPad Pros now in two sizes, starting at just $599, the 9.6. And the 12.9 also now gets that new 256 gigabyte configuration, so our highest end customers are going to love that. This is the best lineup we've ever had of iPads by far. It starts with just an iPad mini at 269. The iPad Air 2, which used to be our highest end 9.7 inch iPad, is now reduced to $100 to just 399 So a lot of customers are going to like that. And the iPad Pros start at just 599 So that's our news on iPad. Back to you, Tim. Thanks, Bill. So we think whether you already have an iPad or whether it's time for you to replace that PC laptop, the iPad Pro is an amazing choice. It allows you to do so much more. So you've seen some incredible products this morning and some, some great things on two initiatives that are very important to us, like our work to curtail climate change, Apple on 100% renewable energy and Care Kit at just $299. A great update for Apple TV with folders and expanded use of both Siri and dictation. The iPhone SE, the most powerful four inch phone ever created. And iPad Pro, so powerful and so capable, it truly is the future of personal computing. We're always pushing forward and in innovating and in doing things that positively affect many people. It's something that Apple has been doing for over 40 years. This is probably the last product introduction in the town hall that you're sitting in today. We've had a lot of important announcements here. It's a very special place with lots of memories. The iPod was announced in this room, and so was the App Store. We have lots of great memories here. Next year, in 2017, we're looking forward to moving. To our new campus and our new theater there, and we expect That we're going to have many, many opportunities to invite all of you to join us there. We're looking forward to, to moving, and we can't wait to see what's in store for the next 40 years and share it with you. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Special thanks to everyone at Apple who made today possible. Uh, members of the press, we have a hands-on area across the hall in the piano bar, and uh, so Please go get your hands on these great products. Thank you very much.